What are doing on HQ? Welcome back to another episode of Out of Bounds News. And as always, we got an all star starting lineup for today's stories. So without hesitation, let's jump into it. First things first, we gotta talk about John Morant. This man picked Moneybag Yo over J. Cole and other artists for references of him in a song. And he picked Moneybag Yo for his track, Rookie of the Year. It ended up sparking media attention because the list included phenomenal artists such as 21 Savage, J. Cole, and many others, yet he picked Moneybag Yo. It isn't even surprising to see why John Moran would pick Money Back Yo since they have so much mutual respect for one another, even going as far as being in the same Nike commercial together. So, it's to each his own to say the least. While the public tries to figure out how John Moran would pick Money Back Yo over various other artists, we have to talk about how ain't no damn way Spider-Man No Way Home got outshined by a horror movie its opening weekend. One month following Spider-Man's incredible box office performance, the hit horror series Scream outperformed No Way Home at the box office its opening weekend, making $35 million, while No Way Home only made about $30 million. Scream may have outperformed No Way Home when it comes to its opening weekend, but it still hasn't outperformed No Way Home when it comes to its overall grossing revenue streams, because No Way Home's been out for a month, it's generated over millions and millions and millions of dollars. Scream could do the same thing, but we just have to wait and see. I can definitely see how Scream did so well though. I can definitely see it. Speaking of Spider-Man, Jaden Smith is now rumored to be the next live action Miles Morales. Most fans have been begging for a live action Miles Morales, even going to the point of suggesting that current artist NBA Youngboy should have been Miles Morales due to the fact that he has the traits that Tobey Maguire and all these other Spider-Men have. Some of these traits include being a phenomenal interrogator, which would be great if he has to go up against villains such as the Sandman, which he also has experience in fighting. He also has the ability of detecting where things will be before they happen, aka Spider-Sense, so that would have been great as well. He already has a cat, which Miles Morales already had in the hit game, Spider-Man Miles Morales. And... He just got hands like that, bro. He hit him with the pop, 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 one, two, three, punch, bam, you hitting the ground. That which would have been cash money, but it is what it is. All jokes aside, though, I feel like Jane Smith would be a good fit because he has a good acting track record being in films such as The Karate Kid, The Pursuit of Happiness, After Earth, and Life in a Year. I feel like he could do it, and also the reason why people are speculating this is because of this tweet right here that he put on Twitter having a spider-man mask on and after that tweet went live i can't stress this enough a few days later it was already put onto the internet that he had already been in talks with the mcu like kevin feige and them had already talked to this kid and we're like yo listen i feel like you are great for our youth group and we want you in the mcu and i just find that baffling i find that insane to think about that this man, Jaden Smith, could potentially be the next Miles Morales. And the crazy thing is, this could genuinely happen. This is realistic because we have seen Tom Holland say like, Yo, listen, I want to pass the torch. I don't want to be the Spider-Man guy no more because I want to rest and have a family because he's been at it for five to six movies for five to six years. And I can understand why Tom Holland wants to do that. But unfortunately... Kevin Feige already has him under a contract for four to five more Spider-Man movies, but that doesn't mean Miles Morales can't be his own thing. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Let's move on from one controversial topic onto the next one. So Kyrie Irving is back in the spotlight. He just came back. He had his first few games and he's already back in, but not for basketball reasons. He's back in the spotlight because he owes 25 racks for cursing out a Cavs fan. With the situation, to keep it a long story short, Cavs fan was heckling Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving said, and I quote, I got y'all motherfuckers a championship and y'all still ungrateful. I mean, I can understand why Kyrie responded the way that he did, but there could have been a better way to go at it. Because as an athlete, especially as an NBA player, the eyes of the media are going to be on you at all times. So what you say 
everyone's gonna see it and you can't take it back so you have to like say it in a way that's not gonna hurt the feelings of the fan and it's not gonna make you look bad in the limelight or you could have just not responded at all he could have just done that as well this isn't even Kyrie's first time being in the spotlight for saying something negative to another person a few years back he had a game against Dennis Schroeder Dennis Schroeder said somewhat of a racial slur, but not really. And Kyrie got on his case. He was mad. He was angry. He, You could see the emotion in his body language. He was not happy with that. But this is something that he has an issue doing. He just can't control his emotions. He has to let the diva inside of him out. And he has to just let it all out for the world to see. And you just can't do that. Lastly, we got to bring some hip-hop into this. We're going to talk about how NBA Youngboy and Lil Durk have been sending shots at one another in their beef that's been escalating for years so far. And the shots that they're sending back at each other are somewhat subtle, but not discreet at the same time. Youngboy started off by saying, y'all gon' die. And then Lil Durk responded back by, hurry y'all bitch ass up. And then Future got involved and stepped in and said, I'm that guy too. And then it just started everyone and their mama just responding and like, when you look at it at first glance, uh, I'm saying when I did it, I'm just like, yo, this is hilarious. This is funny as fuck. But it's like, these are messages to each other. They're trying to like tell each other, yo, bro, I'm going to spin the block on you right now. And there's no telling how this can escalate. And the whole reason why this beef is even going on right now is because NBA Youngboy dissed King Von in his recent album Colors, which as we all know, Lil Durk and Von were like, like this they're close they're brothers for life and Lil Durk took that personally like that's not pushing P bro like you can't be doing that you can't be talking down on a dude that's already dead especially if that's my homeboy and knowing how both of them are extremely violent and when shit hits the fan they're gonna go do it no matter what I don't want to see what happens I hope this doesn't go down to the streets I'm hoping they just talk it out and just keep it verbal and that's it but we'll just have to see what happens and that'll be all for this week's episode of Out of Bounds News. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. It really helps out the channel out. And let me know your favorite part of the video. Hope you guys are having a great day. NLH, never lose hope. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>